Welcome back to our video series on Accounting System on Excel. In this video, we will cover the Journal Entries Worksheet and how to use it to record transactions. If you haven't watched the previous videos, I recommend you do so before continuing, as they explain the Index Worksheet and the Chart of Accounts Sheet. These are important to help you understand this video better. Let's get started. A journal entry is a record of a business transaction that affects the accounts of a company. It usually consists of a date, an account name, an amount, and an explanation of the transaction. A journal entry can be illustrated as follows. In my file, I will create journal entries worksheet and then continue with the previous example. Create a new sheet. Let's start with titles. I need date. Amount Account Explanation Debit and credit, which will be filled automatically later. Let me use Format Painter to get the same titles format from Chart of Account Worksheet. Go to the Chart of Account Sheet. Select A1. Format Painter in the Home tab. Turn to the Entries Sheet. Select A1 F1 range. Drag the boundary on the right side of the column heading until the column is the width that you want. I can do the same steps for multiple columns. Select column B. Press Ctrl and select columns E and F. And change their width together. Don't forget the accounting format for these columns. I already selected the columns. Just click Accounting Number Format on the Home tab. To decrease the decimal, click Decrease Decimal on the Home tab. The account must be one of accounts that I defined in the Chart of Accounts worksheet. For that I want a dynamic range for data list. The list I want is A2, A11 range, but I want it to be expanded if I add more accounts. For that I will use Offset function. Offset. The reference is A2 with absolute reference. Now rows are needed, and no columns. To get the height I want, I will use count a function. The value I want is column A with absolute reference. I got all the accounts I want, but I don't want this zero. To remove it subtract one from count a function. That's it. To make this formula work properly in all sheets, I will cut it. Paste it in the Entries sheet. Highlight the formula that you want to use as the source of the list and press Ctrl plus X to cut it. Next, click on Column C and go to the Data tab on the ribbon. Then, click on Data Validation and choose List from the Allow option. Finally, paste the formula that you cut earlier into the Source box and click OK. Everything is running well. I want to apply date format on column A. Select column A. Click the dialog box launcher next to number on the home tab. Choose the date you want. Before starting with my example, let me freeze panes. Select A2 to freeze row 1. View tab. Freeze panes. Freeze panes. Freeze panes is a feature that helps you to always know what kind of data you are viewing by keeping certain rows or columns visible while scrolling through the spreadsheet. This is especially useful when you have a large data set and you want to keep the headings of each row or column on the screen. I think I forgot to rename this sheet. Let me rename it Journal Entries. Let's move to our previous example with the transactions accrued during the year. The first one is, cash sales were $150,000 while credit sales were $100,000. I will use any date let me choose January 1st. This entry is recorded like this. Debit, cash by $150,000. Accounts receivable by $100,000. Credit, sales by $250,000. And the explanation is, cash and credit sales for the year. Let me record this entry on my file. Type in A1, 1-1, it will give me the date January 1st, 2023, since 2023 is the current year. 
I used to use negative numbers for debit accounts for that I will type in B2 minus 150,000. The first account is cash. In the explanation I will type cash and credit sales for the year. For debit and credit, I will fill them automatically later with formulas. Control and apostrophe to repeat the upper cell content. Minus 100,000 because the account is debit. The account here is accounts receivable. Repeat the explanation by clicking control and apostrophe. Again, for date. Positive 250,000 for credit account. Excel will not approve me to type sales here because I didn't define this account in the chart of accounts worksheet. Turn to the chart of accounts sheet to define it. Account name is sales. No opening balance. Press tab to go to the right cell. The statement here is income statement. Press tab to autocomplete. Revenues. Sales and service revenue. All income statement accounts are not a part of cash flow statement, except net income and depreciation and amortization. But here I won't use anyone. Now I can complete the entry. Sales. Control and apostrophe. The second transaction is. Credit sales returns and allowance were $10,000. The entry is. Debit. Sales returns and allowance by $10,000. Credit, accounts receivable by the same amount. The description is credit sales returns and allowance. I have a new account to define in the chart of accounts sheet, which is sales returns and allowance. It's an income statement account under revenues, under sales and service revenues. The entry is recorded in the journal entries sheet with negative number for debit and positive number for credit. The interest revenue was $31,000 received cash. The entry is debit cash by $31,000. Credit interest revenue by the same amount. I will define interest revenue in the chart of accounts sheet under income statement, revenues, other revenues and gains. In journal entries worksheet the cash will have negative number and the interest revenue will have a positive number. Cash purchases were $60,000 while credit purchases were $90,000. Here I will use a combination of a periodic inventory system and a perpetual inventory system. I will use inventories account instead of purchases and purchases returns and allowance. But the ending inventory I will determine it manually since I don't have inventory control on this file. If you want an inventory control accounting system, you can see this video. I will enter two entries, but you can combine them in one. The first is debit inventories by $60,000, credit cash by the same amount. The second is debit inventories by $90,000, credit accounts payable by the same amount. You can see the entries in my file. Credit purchases returns and allowance were $4,000. The entry is debit accounts payable by $4,000 credit inventories by the same amount. Ending inventories were $2,000. Use inventories account for purchases and cost of goods sold for ending inventories. Cost of goods sold equals beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory. With a simple calculation, we will find that the cost of goods sold is equal to $145,000. The entry is debit cost of goods sold by $145,000. Credit inventories by the same amount. After finishing all transactions, the journal entries worksheet will look like this. In the next video, I will fill debit and credit automatically and determine all accounts balances in the chart of accounts sheet before creating the general ledger worksheet. Remember that the members of this channel have early access to this series and other exclusive benefits. I hope to see you soon in the next video.